can I tell you ladies and gentlemen maybe that's why God is shaking up your life because something is getting ready to be released and somebody is getting ready to get up can I tell you ain't no need of you being scared about the shaking moments of your life ladies and gentlemen because it could be a sign that something's getting ready to be released and somebody is getting ready to get up I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the gospel of Matthew chapter number 28 Matthew chapter 28 actually I want to begin reading in Matthew chapter 27 verse 62 I want to read this uh, context of scripture that provides our scene and setting uh, for this Easter speech today Matthew chapter 27 verse number 62 let's begin there Matthew chapter 27 verse number 62 your Bible should read now the next day that followed the day of the preparation the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure unto the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, you have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Let's go to uh, chapter 28, verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning <clears throat> and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, do not fear, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen, as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying all hell and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him then said Jesus unto them be not afraid go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me I want to tag this text a fresh start a fresh start This story that we have read in your hearing, ladies and gentlemen, is the most definitive common thread that connects the four Gospels. Their accounts are both similar and distinct. They're both uh, succinct and diverse. But it is this particular event in the Lord Jesus' life that has grouped them all together in this quartet of gospel writings centered on the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew, Matthew's account is succinct with his thesis to present the Lord Jesus as King and Messiah. And so in his account, 
what is unique to his account about the resurrection story is the presence and the impact of the Roman soldiers who were stationed at Jesus' sepulcher since Saturday. You and I read Matthew chapter 27, verses 62, beginning towards the end of the chapter. Jesus died on Friday. They buried him Friday night. And then on Saturday, the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting with Pilate about a statement that Jesus had made predicting his own resurrection. Jesus Christ within Matthew's gospel alone predicted five times his own resurrection. And so every time he talked about his crucifixion, he never talked about his crucifixion without addressing his resurrection. They are aware that he has made this announcement, this prediction, and so they meet on Saturday to place security guards, what the Bible calls a watch, in front of the stone because they are anticipating that what he said may come to pass. But they've already concocted their own conspiracy theory to make sure that his story is invalidated by suggesting and preparing a lie before it ever happens. To suggest that if this happens, please say that the disciples came and stole his body. And so they place security guards outside of the door, the stone door of the sepulcher. And there on Sunday morning, as we read in chapter 28, on Sunday morning, these women, these devout sisters of the Lord Jesus Christ rise and arrive at the sepulcher of Jesus at daybreak as the sun is rising. And as they are coming, we've got to be very clear, ladies and gentlemen, that they did not come to the sepulcher because they believed in a risen Christ. Because when we read Mark and Luke's account of this story, these women came to Jesus' tomb with embalming spices that they were intending to see a dead Jesus and they were intending to keep him dead and preserve him dead as long as they possibly could. They did not come expecting to see a risen Christ. They, they themselves, by their very actions, did not believe in the resurrection themselves. Because if they did believe in the resurrection, you would not come to a person's grave with embalming fluid in order to keep them dead. And so we've got disciples who had abandoned Jesus. We've got a group of women who are trying to keep him dead. And we got soldiers that don't want to see him alive. Preach Pastor Morgan. It's, a, it's an interesting scene at our Lord's Supper that there are three groups who have some tie to this event. And none of them, none of the three are acting in accordance with the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. If I had walked with the Lord Jesus Christ and saw him raise three other people and he said that he was going to get up himself, I am coming to his grave on that Sunday morning with a lawn chair. I am sitting there waiting on our master to come back. I have seen him raise Lazarus from the dead. I have seen him raise the woman at Nain's son while they're in the funeral procession. I've seen him stop by Jairus' house and raise his daughter just after she had expired. And since I've already seen him, 
raise three other people. I'm bringing my, 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 my chair. I'm going to sit it outside of his sepulcher and wait on him to get up because if he's already done it for other people, I have no reason not to believe that he can do it for himself. However, when we see this scene, ladies and gentlemen, it is an interesting aspect that nobody who heard Jesus talk, heard him preach, saw him work miracles, are here expecting the risen Christ. The only person who is expecting him to get up is God. When you read this text, there are two indications that God is on the scene. The first indication that God is on the scene, ladies and gentlemen, is that the text says there was an earthquake. <laughs> the first time we see this God's presence is that the text says there's an earthquake. The second time we see God involved, the Bible says that God decided to dispatch an angel from heaven, descend from heaven, and roll the stone away. C come here. First time we see God is in an earthquake. Uh, I, 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 I want to pitch my tent there and suggest that this is not some type of random uh, natural event. This, this, this particular act of nature, ladies and gentlemen, is specific, strategic, and intentional. Let me try it again. It's an earthquake. It, it, it wasn't a storm. It wasn't a hell storm. It wasn't a snowstorm. It wasn't a hurricane. It wasn't a typhoon. It was a earthquake and you already know ladies and gentlemen that whatever is in the text is there for a reason it's not a random event that there was an earthquake because ladies and gentlemen if you got a bible and can read it you will discover that in Matthew chapter 27 verses 50 through 53 there was an earthquake two days ago when Jesus died on the cross. Matthew chapter 27 verse 50 says that Jesus gave up the ghost and then there was an earthquake and when this earthquake happened two days ago the Bible says the earth opened graves open and the dead rose from their sleep y'all missed it one more time I'll try it one more time there's an earthquake in chapter 28 because two days ago when Jesus died there was an earthquake in Matthew 27 verse 50 and the text says when Jesus died there was an earthquake graves open and those who slept arose like the resurrection. I'll try it again. You're going to get this in a minute. Two days ago, there was an earthquake when Jesus died. <clears throat> and when that earthquake happened, the Bible says the earth opened, graves were opened, and the dead who were slept arose. I'm trying to tell you, by the time we get to Matthew chapter 28, two days later, there's another earthquake because somebody about to get up. I'll shout myself. You, you're going to kiss this in a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew chapter 27 says when Jesus died, there was an earthquake and the dead got up. Matthew chapter 28 verse 1 says when on, on Sunday morning there was an earthquake and the earth was getting ready to open up and something was getting ready to rock. I'm trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in the New Testament, when there is an earthquake, at times it's a sign that God is getting ready to shake something up because he's getting ready to open something up. You still ain't feeling me. I'll shout myself. Matthew chapter 27, there was an earthquake and the dead got up. Matthew chapter 28, there was an earthquake and Jesus got up. Acts chapter 16, verse 26, Paul and Silas are in a Roman prison and the text says there was an earthquake and Paul and Silas and the prisoners got up. Revelations chapter 6, verse 2, the Bible says there was an earthquake and the sixth seal was was open. Revelations chapter 8 verse 5. The Bible says there was an earthquake and the seventh seal was open. Revelations chapter 11 verse 19. The Bible says there was an earthquake 
earthquake and the temple in heaven was open. I'm trying to tell you since you don't want to talk back to me in your living room that when God shakes your life he is because he's getting ready to release something and something is about to open up and ladies and gentlemen early this morning in Matthew chapter 28 there was an earthquake because something was getting ready to be released and somebody was getting ready to come out can I tell you ladies and gentlemen maybe that's why God is shaking up your life because something is getting ready to be released and somebody is getting ready to get up can I tell you ain't no need of you being scared about the shaking moments of your life ladies and gentlemen because it could be a sign that something's getting ready to be released and somebody is getting ready to get up the bible says there was an earthquake on that morning and the lord had sent an earthquake that was earth's response to somebody being able to be released and somebody being able to open up but the bible says there was also an angel who comes as god's preacher this angelic announcement and the bible says he comes and comes to roll the stone away and when he rolls the stone away he comes in a white light garment that 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 portrayed the countenance of lightning so he came quickly and he came brightly and his brightness had shocked the soldiers who were there to the point that the Bible says they fainted. They became as dead men. They did not die. Because when we read Matthew chapter 28 verse 11 through 15, the Bible says these same soldiers went back to meet with their authorities to again concoct this uh, conspiracy theory that, that the disciples stole the body. So they didn't die. They just fainted. And when they fainted, they're out of the way. Come in, you're going to get this in a minute. Jesus is in the day that he is supposed to get up. And on the day he's supposed to get up, the Roman government has placed soldiers at his sepulcher that have been there for at least 24 hours. They got there on Saturday. Watch this, y'all. They got there on Saturday because they heard Jesus say on the third day I'm getting up so just in case he actually does get up we're going to be there to try to prevent it y'all so slow so I'll try it again maybe ladies and gentlemen people are trying to block you because they actually believe in you maybe ladies and gentlemen people are working hard to try to stop your progress because they actually believe that one day what you said and what you believe may actually come true so sometimes people who are blockers and haters are actually giving reverse comments they're actually giving reverse compliments that they actually believe what might happen and they're going to try to stop it Watch it, y'all. Each group has their own role in this matter. The soldiers are there because they are threatened by Christ's potential. He is a dead man who's been in a grave for at least three days now. And you got to put security at the grave of a dead man. You're not even threatened by my life. You're threatened by my potential. Because even in my inability, my potential still may come to pass. That's a joke, ain't it? Is there not any other greater demonstration of fear that you got to block me when I'm not even active? Lord, I wish I had a church in here. You got to try to stop me when I'm not even active. I'm not mobile. I'm not doing anything. I'm just laying in this sepulchre dead. I can't be that much of a threat to you if I'm active and dead. But there are people, ladies and gentlemen, they're not threatened by your life. They're threatened by your faith. They're not threatened by your life. They're threatened by your potential. They will try to stop you even when you're not even doing anything. There are people there, the soldiers are there to prevent their potential, prevent Christ's potential. The women come to preserve him in his own reality. They are there not because they believe he can, he's going to get up. 
they're there to keep him dead. Lord have mercy today. If you don't have, I, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you can testify. If, if, if you've got potential on your life, you either got people who are trying to prevent your potential or they're trying to keep you in your present reality. Lord have mercy today. When you've got potential and anointing and, and, and purpose and promise on your life, there are those who will try to stop you from progressing and then there are those who try to keep you right where you are. Those women showed up with embalming fluid to try to keep him in his own reality and then there are those disciples who walk with him who abandon him all together catch that church the disciples abandon him the soldiers are trying to prevent his potential and the women are trying to make him stay stuck in his in his present reality which means y'all lord have mercy today if jesus is gonna get up on sunday morning He's got to be the only one to believe in his own resurrection. Lord Jesus, I don't know who I'm preaching to in here today, but I'm trying to tell you, you don't have time to be waiting on people to support you. You don't have time to be waiting on people to urge you on. You don't have time to be waiting to see who's going to come stand by your side. If you're going to do something great, it's going to begin with you believing in yourself all by yourself. That Sunday morning, nobody believed in the resurrection but Jesus this is something he had to do all by himself his disciples didn't believe in him the women didn't believe in him the soldiers are trying to pre prevent him and ladies and gentlemen oftentimes doing great things has to begin with your ability to believe in yourself and what God has invested in you by the time we get to Sunday morning Jesus is the only one who believes in the resurrection I need to pause here and get in your business isn't it strange church uh, that people believe in your potential when it benefits them <laughs> but when your potential only benefits you they don't believe in you do you know some folk like that that when they need something from you they got all kind of faith in you they got all kind of belief in you but when it's time for something to happen in your life for yourself they are nowhere to be found maybe ladies and gentlemen you've got to stop making excuses about who is not supporting you who is not calling you who is not praying for you who is not there for you and say I I've got to start this thing by myself. I've got to believe in this thing with just me and the Lord. Nobody believed in the resurrection that morning but Jesus. All the miracles he worked, nobody believed. All the parables he taught, nobody believed. All the resurrections that he had done, three of them to record, nobody believed. All the stories that had happened, nobody believed. The disciples were, got pulled off their jobs to go full time in ministry. He took care of their finances, fed them, covered them. They still didn't believe. Nobody's there but the one who's dead, who believes in his own resurrection. Maybe that's God's word for somebody in here. It's about time for you to start believing in your own get up. <laughs> It's about time for you to start believing in your own comeback. Lord, I wish I had some help in here. It's about time for you to start believing in your own resurrection. You've got to believe that what is happening in your life is not permanent, but you will make a comeback if you're the only one that believes it. Jesus believes it. And listen to what the angel says. The angel says to those women, he has risen. He is not here. He has risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to pitch my tent here uh, because uh, th th this, this, this particular point of the passage is an interesting point because it is my attempt to preach somebody else's sermon. Uh, it's my attempt to preach somebody else's sermon. If you've got a Bible and you like it uh, and can read it, by the way, uh, look at Matthew chapter 28. Um, there's a preacher preaching uh, already uh, in the story. Uh, 
it's not Jesus, it's the angel. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's the angel. He's already preaching the sermon, so I'm going to preach his sermon. Uh, I, I'm not copying him, but it's in the Bible, so I get a chance to say it because it's in the Bible. I'm going to preach his sermon. Here's his sermon. The angel shows up, y'all, to give us an exegesis and an exposition on emptiness. I got rewind in my mind. Come here. He shows up, and his sermon is all about emptiness. Lord have mercy. I'm going to shout myself at here. The preacher shows up from heaven and his sermon is called the resurrection. That's the title of his sermon. But the exegesis of the resurrection is about emptiness. He shows us church that somehow, some way, uh, resurrection is tied to emptiness. He sits there, gives the title of his sermon. The title of the sermon is, he ain't here, he rose and then looks upon and sits on the, on the, on the stone and says, y'all want to see, y'all want to prove it? Look in here. The first proof that he is risen is that there's an empty space where he used to be. Lord, I'll shout myself here. He says to the women, he said, hold on women. Uh, you need to be empty of fear. He says to the women, do not fear. He said, I need you to be empty of fear. He said, the second thing I need you to do is understand that there, that, that resurrection is an emptiness of lifelessness. Uh, if Jesus got up today, there is no need for him to still be acting like he did just to satisfy your expectation. If you came here looking for a dead Jesus, I'm going to mess up your expectation and give you something you did not expect. Because when I am alive, I'm not going to stay dead just to fulfill your expectation. He is not here. He is alive. But the final thing he preached about, about emptiness, y'all, is the emptiness of familiarity. He says to those women, hey, sisters, come here. Look in here and see where the Lord used to be. Look in here and see where the Lord used to be. Now here's the joke of the text. The joke of the text, Lenine, is that the announcement given to the women is given to the exact same people who saw Joseph bury Jesus in Matthew chapter 27. The Bible says in verse 60 and 61 that these exact same women were sitting against the sepulcher watching Joseph bury Jesus. Y'all don't know how to get happy so I'll shout myself. Jesus made sure and heaven made sure that the people who last saw Jesus where he was are the first people to get the message that he's not where you last saw him. I'll shout myself. Sometimes, y'all, if you've been risen, the people who knew what you used to be and where you used to be got to be the first people to get the news that you ain't where you used to be and you're not who you used to be and you're not where you used to be. Isn't it good news that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. I know you know me from where I used to be but I've risen now and I'm not where I used to be so here's the theology I need y'all to write this I need you to tweet it I need you to post it I need you to do whatever here's the point y'all what is the relationship between this grave and Jesus being up I'm glad you asked because you're intelligent people what's the relationship because truthfully y'all the story didn't have to start at the grave. The story could have started with just his post-resurrection appearances. The grave alone does not prove that Jesus is alive. It just proves he is not in it. But after the post-resurrection appearances, now it's proof that he is alive because somebody saw him. So here's your point. What is the point of this empty grave to resurrection? Y'all read it? Write it down. You got to get this. This the Lord, the Lord dropped this in my spirit. I almost ran out of my studies. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to rise, 
some aspect of your life must be left empty. God have mercy today. If you're going to get up and get to a new place in God, some aspect of your life has got to be left empty. Don't try to fill it. Don't try to substitute it. Don't try to do any. Just leave it empty. Because when you rise, some aspect of your life got to be left empty. God's word to somebody in here is when you rise, you don't have to try to go back and fix what other people still don't understand. Just leave it empty. You don't have to go back and try to reconcile what other folk don't try to understand. Just leave it empty. Because the fact that, it, that you rose is proof that there's some aspect of your life that's got to be left empty. That's the essence of emptiness, church. Uh, uh, you, you and I are experiencing... Uh, a historic Easter because the truth of the matter is this Easter looks more like the original Easter than any Easter this Easter looks more like the original Easter because there's an empty sanctuary to showcase an empty grave and when the saints first had their first Easter they couldn't come into a sanctuary they had to shout at the crib I wish I had some people today that didn't mind getting happy in your bathroom, in your living room, in your house that just because you're not in here doesn't prove that you're not saved, it's proof you've risen because there's an aspect that's been left empty You got to understand that if you're going to rise, there is some aspect of your life that's got to be left empty. I wish I had a church in here today. I can't, I'll shout myself. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you can't get happy on no other day, you ought to be able to get happy on the Lord's resurrection day because it's proof that there's an aspect of your life that's left empty because you're rising to the glory of God. Thank God he'll raise you up. Thank God he'll let some empty place stay in your life as proof that you have risen in the Lord's church. I'm getting out of my seat. I, I, I've got to quit. i got one more thing to share with you. And I'm quitting, y'all. Uh, did you notice, did you notice the, the, the angel told the women, Lord, hold your boy right here. The angel told the women, I see some of y'all getting happy in your house right now. I see you. The angel told the women, go tell the boys to go meet me in Galilee and there shall they see him. Yeah, <clears throat> that's what they told the women. Uh, and, and, and the initial message, y'all, appears that Jesus is overlooking the women because the message says, that we don't have an interest, that he didn't have an initial interest in seeing the women. His interest was in seeing the disciples. But the women were the messengers to deliver the message, though it overlooked them essentially. Mm -hmm. Jesus wasn't trying to see them. Jesus was trying to see the disciples. But they were obedient even though they were overlooked. Lord have mercy today. They were obedient even though they were overlooked. That's God's word for somebody in him. You getting tired of being overlooked. You getting tired of being pushed to the side. You are getting tired of being shoved out. You are getting tired of being neglected. And you always got to deliver a message about somebody else to somebody else when the message doesn't necessarily benefit you. Watch the sisters. Y'all going to get this. I'm going to run around this church myself. They, they were obedient even though they got overlooked. And in the act of obedience, though they got overlooked, they also had something to happen unexpected. And the unexpected thing that happened is they thought they had got overlooked, 
but Jesus met them while they were being obedient the Bible says they ran to go tell the disciples and as they were running Jesus who they thought overlooked them met them while they were being obedient that's God's word for somebody that God is going to meet you in the act of obedience you thought he overlooked you you thought he didn't care about you but sometimes when you're obedient y'all obedience births unexpected blessings they didn't expect Jesus to show up on that road but he showed up unexpectedly I got some people who are watching me who can testify there's some things you got you didn't pray for you didn't fast for you didn't sing about it you didn't have a meeting about it God met you unexpectedly he gave you some blessings unexpectedly and all you did was be obedient and he gave you some unexpected blessings I'm done y'all I'm done I, I, I'm done when he showed up when he showed up he says all oh, hell if you got a real Bible that's in red print it means Jesus said it if you got a real Bible two words uh, 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 it's in red print it means Jesus and if Jesus said it it means Jesus voice was spoken and if Jesus voice was spoken it means Jesus is alive and uh, according to the ladies they had not seen Jesus they just going to tell the boys to meet Jesus in Galilee but because they were obedient they saw Jesus presence and heard Jesus voice all hell was a Greek meaning Greek uh, greeting that means good morning or hello and also translates be well when Jesus shows up he says good morning to you be well that's God's word for somebody who's struggling with a sickness of any kind God showed up in your life just to tell you hello be well can you push that to somebody and tell them that's God's word for you today good morning be well I don't care what you're struggling with you may not even have a virus you may have diabetes you may have high blood pressure you may have some kind of other disease God's word to you is good morning be well I want you to be well I want you to prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers good morning and be well and when they heard from Jesus watch what the Bible said the Bible says y'all they dropped to Jesus feet and worshiped him now I want to ask y'all a question because uh, they're not talking to me so I, I'll talk to y'all since y'all two three y'all in here today I want to ask y'all a question if if the women Calvin Watson dropped to Jesus' feet. Wouldn't that have put them closer to the nail prints in his feet? If they dropped to his feet. The Bible says in John's account that after Jesus rose, he retained his crucifixion scars. You remember doubting Thomas, don't you? Thomas says, I won't believe it's him until I see the nail prints in his hands and, 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 the, and the hole in his side. So if he got the nail prints in his hand and the hole in his side, he still got the scars on his feet. I thought I had a church around here. And when they dropped to his feet, the Bible does not acknowledge his wounds, though they were still there. The Bible acknowledged they worshiped him without being distracted by pain. Lord have mercy they didn't let the sight of pain and scars in the Lord Jesus give him the glory that's God's word for somebody in here you might be close to scars and pain but the truth of the matter is if he got them and got up that means you can get up if you got them if you just learn how to give him the glory and see him show up in your life all right I'm done I'm done uh, I was trying to figure out I was trying to figure out do how to get out of this sermon. I was trying to figure it out. And uh, it, 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 it happened Friday. It happened Friday. Uh, I'm sitting in, uh, in my office, Cheryl, trying to get this little sermon together. I'm trying to figure out, Calvin, how to get out this sermon. I'm sitting in my office. And my wife runs in the office. And she said, she said honey, uh, dad's on the phone. He want to talk to you. I said, OK. Uh, and she brought the phone in the office. And my father-in-law was on a FaceTime call. Yeah, yeah, I'm sitting in the office trying to figure out how to close this sermon. And while I'm studying, while I'm preparing, <clears throat> while I'm serving, 
I'm sitting in the office. She runs in the office and said, hey, man, D dad's on the phone. He want to talk to you. I said, okay, cool. She said, he said, he's on FaceTime call. Okay, great. Good. Man, I get the phone and I see him and I say, hey, man, what's up? Good to see you. He's smiling. He talking to me. Now, here's what y'all don't understand. My father-in-law, a week ago, went in the hospital for COVID. He had the virus. Him and my mother-in-law had the virus. And all I know is for COVID patients, they got to go in a room. You can't talk to them. You can't see them. You can't touch them. And dad's case got so bad, y'all. His temperature dropped. His body temperature dropped. His blood pressure dropped. Which means he was speaking into eternity, but wasn't going to go all the way. He was in between time and eternity. He was in the process of dying. But all I can tell you is last Friday, I know he got up because I saw him y'all still slow I know he came out that room cause I saw him I was on the phone with him I had a FaceTime view with him and I seen his face all I can tell you is that he went in that room with a death with a life threatening virus I don't know what the nurses did to him I don't know what the doctors did to him I don't know how many times they met about him all I know is that he went in a room where nobody could touch him and was playing between life and death but last Friday I know he come out that room cause I saw him I got to ask y'all the question you weren't at Calvary this morning you weren't at the graveside this morning but do you have you seen him since he got up has he showed up in your life has he woke you up has he blessed your life you don't have to worry about the tomb as long as you can say I've seen him good night bless y'all on this Easter I'm getting in I'm getting out of here somebody is watching me and saying pastor that was your father-in-law uh, and he survived but my loved one didn't survive I got good news for you y'all ready here it go uh, story is told about a little boy who went riding with his daddy and while he was riding with his daddy they drove past a cemetery and the little boy looked over at the cemetery and saw an open grave. Kenny, the little boy, looked back at his daddy and said, Daddy, look, one of them got out. That's why we in here this morning. Because before sunrise this morning, one of them got out. I wish I had somebody who testified that you might be the one that God has let out. I don't need you to be in here today for me to give him the glory because I remember days when I was by myself and I had to preach to myself and this only reminds me of those days when I got happy all by myself and I'm reminded that the reason why I'm happy is because one of them got out Phyllis Larry if you hear me today you are proof that one of them got out Pastor David Johnson if you hear me today you are proof that one of them got out Wilma Ruffin and Joe Ruffin if you hear me today you are proof that one of them got out I got some other people who are watching me and you are proof that one of them got out and if you got out you got to show somebody that you got out it's no need of coming out if you ain't gonna let nobody see you out I need somebody on social media to just take a picture of yourself and post it on social media and tell the world I'm the one that got out early this morning there was one who got out early. yeah Lord have mercy yeah yes sir we in here today you on the line because this
this morning one of them got out and the good news is if one can get out others can get out the Bible says that Jesus is the first fruits of them that slept and here is the good news since he's the first fruits of them that slept one day the Lord shall crack the sky and the dead in Christ shall rise and those of us that remain shall be caught up together to meet him in the air aren't you glad that death doesn't have the final word Jesus says I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last and I got the last word somebody open your mouth right in your house and give him glory yeah, yeah. yeah. where you are can you just lift your hands right where you are can you worship God we're not able to be in the church house but you ought to be at the house church I said we're not able to be in the church house but you ought to be in the house church and you ought to testify you have a fresh start cause you're the one that got out and even if you have a loved one who has died one day because one got out all the rest are gonna get out oh bless his name and we all gonna have a fresh start we all gonna have a fresh start in the Lord Jesus Christ.